hello everyone you're welcome back to my channel um in today's edition i'll quickly teach you how to make um a peplum blouse with kissing pleating and it's gonna be an off shoulder um with a little cape so let's go this way um this is our normal routine while cutting a blouse your half length under bust bust point and the upper bust line so mind you how to get your upper bust line anything you have from your under bust to your bust point is what you are going to mark at your upper part to get your upper bust line so on your bust point you are going to measure your bust distance divided by two then anything you have there you are going to remove half inch and you mark it on your under bust line and your um half length line which is the waistline so you connect them together if if you have been watching my videos you won't have problem with this anymore so your shoulder measurement divided by two plus the half inch so in allowance then three inches downward then you just connect them together i don't think we should have problem doing this anymore so that is why i'm just brushing through it so now this is the center front so now to get the side mind you I always said it depending on how busty the the stuff is so you can make use of two inches two and a half three inches or three and a half depending on how big the size you're cutting for so you are making use of two and a half inches so when you mark that two and a half inches on your under bust line you're going to mark the same thing on your upper bust line then you just give it a nice shape this way then you cut it out you are going to cut it out so after cutting it out you are going to place the center front on the on the side so to get your final measurement so now you are going to take your bust measurement divided by four plus two inches sewing allowance you are going to do the same thing on the waistline and on the under bust line so you are going to connect them together this way from this part you are going to measure seven inches for the armhole that is not the actual armhole measurement you are still going to trim after joining but just to pave way for the armhole so it's going to come out this way so the next thing you are going to do now is to cut it off it's as simple as that i don't think we should have problem doing this anymore So this is the center front and the side front so to get it back you're just going to place the the front piece um on the remaining fabric then you are going to cut your back in a very simple way mind you the back is not going to be higher than the uh than the front in this case because it's gonna be an off shoulder we are still going to trim off so there's no point of making the back longer than the front so just place the front bodies on the remaining fabric like this leaving your two inches behind for the zip allowance then you are going to trim this way you are going to trim this way you are just cutting you are adding um additional one inch at the upper part you won't, you make them equal if you make it equal by the time you are joining the back piece the side back will not be will not be equal so you just have to add these um small inches while cutting on this side back part i believe you guys understand what i'm trying to say please don't get confused so this is the front you are taking up the front if you look at the side back now you see that it's a bit longer than the center back yes it should be that way because if you make them equal by the time you are joining the side back will not be equal with this center back so just trim little in between them like this because of the slope at the back just cut off like half inch so now you are going to you are done with the cutting you place it on the fabric and you cut out the same thing to make it easy for you make sure you ma you have um gum your fabric before so now i just want to put this um bias on it just to make little design so this is bias you're just going to 
I just want to place this on the center front just to beautify the blouse a little bit. So all you need to do is just place them, make sure they are equal and they align very well, then you are going to sew on it. Just place it whichever way you want, but make sure you um, achieve your desired design. So, you can equally make this like this. You can place it on the side like this, and you sew. On the both side, both front side, you can do that. It's not really necessary, but if you want to, you can equally do that. Do the same thing on this part too. That's on the side front. It's not really necessary, but if you feel you want to beautify your blouse, you can actually do that. If you look at the center front very well, you see I rule a um, little line there. So that is where I'm going to sew those bias. Um, I think instead of me putting this one on the side front, I uh, decided to put it, put everything on the center front, so that it won't be too busy. So I'm going to put the bias on the center bodies. So now I'm going to sew it down. This is what it looks like after when you might have joined. This is what it's going to look like. So as it is like this, if you like, you can put stone or pearls or anything bead on it. Just to beautify it. So I've already joined them. I've joined the pieces together. The back separate, the front separate. If you look at it very well, you can see I've already joined and ironed it very neat. You are going to do that very neatly. And so now I want to trim. So you are going to place the fabric on the lining. The main fabric on the lining, then you are going to trim. You are going to trim. So now you are going to take your underbust measurement. Mind you, I said it is the back is not going to be longer than the front because it's an off shoulder so we are still going to trim off so you don't necessarily have to add anything so just trim them to make the boat lining and the fabric equal so now your arm hole measurement again 7 inches you are still going to trim don't mind the trimmings it's not going to affect your measurements in any way you are still going to have your allowance there. So you trim like this. So now this one is not going to have a very deep neck. The neck is a little bit high. The off shoulder is not going to be that off. So I'm, I'm making use of 3 inches. The depth of the neck. Then this other side I'm making use of um, two inches. It's not going to open the whole body, so it's gonna be a, a small off shoulder. Mind you, in my one of my video I said the more you go down, the more the dress we have. This other side where I measured two inches will determine how off the the dress is gonna look like. So now I'm taking the front chest measurement. In one of my video, I think I showed you how to do that. That is the front chest measurement. So you are going to trim. You trim it off this way. To get a front chest measurement, you just measure from the front, from under the arm, from this other arm to the other arm that is how you get your front chest measurement so you cut it off this way now i'm taking my body measurement here you can take it this way then you can actually take it after when you might have turned the fabric with the lining 
can take the measurement anytime. So mind you, the blouse is going to have cape, a very small cape. So the cape is going to form the sleeve. The cape is going to form the sleeve. So you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to cut the sleeve separately. So now I want to cut the cape. Please just look at this very carefully. I want to cut the cape. So now you are going to extend it. I showed you guys, if you check in my previous video, how to get the off shoulder, if you want to cut sleeve for the off shoulder, how you measure the, the, the sleeve, the biceps area and all that. But here, yeah, since we are cutting um, um, the cape together with the sleeve, you don't necessarily have to do that. It's usually um, either four, four and a half inches or five is within that range. In case you don't know how to take the measurement on that off shoulder part. If you're making an off shoulder if you want to cut the sleeve this upper part is usually five or four and a half inches it's within that range so if you look at it now this is how this is what the cape is going to look like this is what the cape is going to look like so the extension on this part and this other part is five inches Depending on the size you are cutting for, four and a half, five inches within the range. So I'm cutting for the back. You are following the same shape, but leaving two inches for the for the zip allowance. That is for the back. Just open it up. That is going to be the back of the cape. I'm just showing you demo of how it's going to look like. Yeah. If I thought you want to cut a different cape and you want the cape to form the sleeve, you're still going to follow the same process. You follow the same process. So now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to notch on that part, then exactly on this part too, you are going to notch. So that is where the sleeve is starting from. What I was trying to explain the other time, from that notch into this other side is, is usually four and a half or five inches. It's within that range. So the same thing on the back four and a half mind you four and a half or five inches please don't get it wrong it's within that range if you know you can go with the measurement use four and a half or five inches if five inches is too big you can you can actually just trim off at the end of the day so now i've already turned that part with lining the cape I've already turned the cape with lining. If you look at it very well, from that 5 inches I was talking about, it's already turned in already. So this is the lining now. If you want to turn the lining with the fabric, this is the way you're going to do it. You're just going to sew that way. You pick up the cape, put it in, then you sew. The same thing with the back. So on this um, little cave, I'm just going to place this bias on it. Just single one. Just going to place that single one. I'll sew it on it. Just to complement the center front. So this is what it's going to look like. If you look at it, I've already turned the lining and the fabric together. If you look at it very well, do the same thing with the back bodies. This is the inner part. 
then this is the outer part of it so that is the back I'm going to place on it just join it straight whichever way you can join it just make sure you make it look neat whichever one that is very very easy for you just do it so just join the the cape together the front and the back you join them together and you take your body measurement your bust your under bust and your waist so after when you might have done that now i'm still going to take my final measurement from the back because of the slope at the back it is advisable you take me your measure your final measurement at the back so that your measurement will go in a little bit at the back just to follow the shape of the back it will enable you avoid unnecessary bumps at the back so it is advisable you take your final measurement at the back if you look at it you see that it's not straight so this is what it's going to look like this is the upper part you can see the cape has already formed the sleeve if you want to make your cape a bigger one you are still going to follow the same process if you want to make it a flay you can see you are still going to follow the same process so now the down is going to have um, um, a kissing plating whichever name you want to call it still a plate so i call it kissing plating so what i want to do now is cut psycho for the um the down part i'm going to cut flay for the down part so now the measurement i'm cutting for is um is um 36 inches so what i'm going to do is i'm going to double it i'm going to double it that is 36 times 2 so you're going to double it 36 times 2 so anything you have there you are going to cut cycle for it full cycle for it that is full flay 36 i think is 72 so you are going to cut full fully for 72 inches that is double of the waist measurement we have because of the kissing plating so now i'm de um, i'm determining the 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 length of the flay which is 10 inches you are going to cut it out this way then you just place on fabric and you cut out the same thing if you like you can turn it with crinoline if you like you can add peplum stay just to make it stand you can go meet with any interface that you want depending on how strong you want the flay to be so you open up the the zip allowance part so now i want to notch the center I'm notching the center of the upper part. You not you notch the center on the flay too. So this is where I'm going to put my kissing plate in all the joinings. Back joining, side joining, front joining, then the center, the mid center. So this is the way you are going to start your plate. Please look at it very carefully how to do your kissing plating you are going to fold this way then you fold this other side this way too then the tip of the folded part will be touching each other so this is what is going to look like that is why it is called kissing plating i think the both sides are kissing each other so you are going to do the same thing on those lines so i've already done that this is what it looks like mind you i said it if you want to put crinoline horsehair anything 
or maybe hard stay, peplum stay, maybe you want the peplum to stand very well, you can add what, uh, whichever interface you want to have. I think it will make it look more nicer. So now, after when you might have done that, the next thing to do is to fix your zip. Yeah, this is the easiest way to fix your zip. Without changing the footer, just place the normal uh, straight sewing footer on it. Then you just so caref very carefully. Make sure you don't match on that zip exactly. So you're going to sew gently like that to the end part. Sewing is one of the easiest thing I've ever seen. Just take your time. All it needs to, all you just need to do is just take your time and believe in yourself that you're going to do it. It's not hard. So now I'm trying to make sure the joining aligns together. So you are going to set it very well on this part before you start joining from the down part again. So you place your machine on the other side too. Make sure you don't sew on the on the zip part. So you are going to sew it around. Make sure this joining aligns very well. I believe you understand this very well. So you are going to sew all through. We are going to sew all through to this part. So you are just going to turn this in then you fold on it this way then you stitch on it that is the closure part that is the way you are going to do it you fold in this way and you fold in again you do the same thing then you are done with your blouse as you can see very easy and simple thank you very much everybody for watching please don't forget to share and subscribe see you in my next video